and thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Carol Jenkins, and the program is Black America, and what a treat today. Amy Allison, the founder of She the People, is with us. We have so much to talk about. We'll get more of her bio as we go along. You know, she's a, a former soldier, you know, a medic, has done absolutely everything, but she, the people's uh, plan was to activate a million women of color uh, for this election. Let's see how she's doing. Amy, thanks so much for being with us today. Carol, it's such an honor to be back with you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we've been watching you, and I am so proud because we first met before She the People, and you were very much uh, active in uh, cre the creation of a new universe here in the United States. And what I love the way I've been reading about you recently is that, you know, what we're working towards is that we are either going to have a society that is racist, uh, white supremacist, uh, or that is multicultural and dem democratic? Where, where do you think we're headed? Well, if you look at that, uh, uh, if you looked at the latest debate, uh, it was never more clear. I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm... it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and, and right like me to condemn? White proud supremacists boys. and right proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. I mean, Trump himself has been telling us in all the lies a, a deep essential truth. He's always been a white supremacist. Right. He has been trying to uh, change this country back into a majority white country where white people are in front of the line, every, in front of the rest of us. And that's just, uh, that's, that's what's at stake. That's what's on the ballot in 30 some days. Uh, and there isn't any, in a democracy, you know, the future is not, does, can't rest with one person. But I'm gonna tell you, we are at an, a, a decision point uh, for our nation. And women of color are playing such an important role right now. We're the truth tellers. We tell the truth, even it hurts to tell the truth. We take risks. Right. Think of that nurse who called out the hysterectomies of, of uh, people held in ICE detention. Uh -huh. She, this black woman, risked her job and risked and was being attacked because she told the truth. Think about the truth tellers, Rashida Tlaib and how Ilhan Omar, how these Congresswomen are being attacked by uh, these white supremacist forces. And yet they're doing this in service, not just to themselves or a small slice, but in service to democracy. This is the possibility uh, of this moment and um, why uh, she, the people exists in the first place. It was never, Carol, to just say, okay, it's for the benefit of women of color or yeah. self-described women of color. It was for the benefit of this entire country. The country needs us. And for us to um, realize the possibility of a multiracial democracy in this moment requires moral cl clarity and the kind of courage that you're seeing amongst, amongst us first and foremost as a model for the rest of the country to follow. Right. So um, you've been very specific about uh, activating these million women. You say that you want them in the swing states. And the case of Michigan was so fascinating to me. Every time I read those numbers, you know, that uh, President Trump won by 10,000 votes. And how many women of color did that vote? 200,000? Is that yeah. the number? Yeah. 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 And you see a very similar kind of stat in the must win states. So, so the, the big picture is when we look at 2016 versus now, women of color have a very high turnout, higher than most rate, you know, all other races and genders, particularly we black women. But the challenge is if you don't speak to us and you don't carry the issues and you have an inspiring candidate, some people stay home and that's what happened in 2016. But the number of vote eligible black and brown women far exceeds the number of votes that the Democrats need uh, to win uh, these key states. We yeah, I think you're saying I think you're saying a quarter of the votes are women of color. You know, yeah, in these, these yeah, states. in these swing states. So the states, you know, I live in California. You live in New York. We know that we have a very important state and local issues. In fact, affirmative action is on the ballot here in California. Even right. in California. Uh, women of color's turnout is going to determine whether we reinstate affirmative action and, and justice and fairness here. However, 
if we talk about the, the, the path to winning the White House, it goes through the Electoral College, whether we like it or not. And the Electoral College votes really are in a, a handful of battleground states. These are states that Trump won last time, but right. women of color have the capacity to win this time. Arizona, Texas, Florida, Georgia, and uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Uh, we know that our effort, and this is the first ever coordinated campaign specifically to reach to the most likely Democratic voters, that's, that's women of color, to speak to people, to, you know, a lot of people haven't even been spoken to, if you can, if you can believe that. So we're hearing sure. from our partners on the ground. Uh, unfortunately, I can't believe that, you know? You know I, I remember 2016. Tell me it's not as bad as 2016, though. It's not Is as it bad because we have, listen, we what? pushed so hard for months to have a woman of color in the top of the ticket. And, and you we have got it. we have that. And right. if anyone anyone looks at, is it the same as 2016? Look, 2016 was an all white ticket. True, true. And did in places like Michigan, there was not a concentrated effort to speak to black voters, let alone black women, Latinas, Asian Americans. There just wasn't. And now we have uh, a Biden campaign been playing catch up, and obviously not doing everything perfectly. And we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's all weird and strange. Uh, but we do have more visibility and more influence on the resources and the focus. Women of color have come on the scene. I mean, that was our big uh, goal when we first met. I said, we cannot be ignored for 2020. And in fact, no one will win without right. our you enthusiastic right. support. Right. And, you've, you and so we're here. Right. And, and you held, you've held you know, some of the, the most important gatherings that really placed women of color in the spotlight. Uh, the, the meeting with Kamala Harris, which was a little, you know, had a, a little excitement of its own. <laughs> the you presidential know, they, forum, yeah, we did at Texas Southern last year. And I think that did set, set a tone. But now we're within a month, 70% of Americans are able to early vote. We have got to get we women, we don't have to tell uh, women of color. We don't have to tell black women who to vote for. They wouldn't listen. We are the most progressive, most social justice oriented, most engaged citizens in this country. Black women are. So all we have to do right now, our whole goal is to make sure people double check their registration because in the states I mentioned, with the exception of uh, Michigan, right. they all have Republicans that are. Uh, running the voting systems and uh, the systems are rife with voter suppression. Make sure you're on, you check your registration at shethepeople.org. Make sure you have a plan to vote. Make sure you get your vote. You know, we always say give two weeks. If you're going to drop that in the mail, give two weeks uh, for it to be counted and make sure it was counted. And we are, have the added bonus, uh, Black and Latina and Asian American women of being super voters of bringing our friends and family along. So I know for a fact, my 22 year old, who's a dancer, he's not really, you know, think about right, politics. Right. I, I love this story, right? This yeah. young man is gonna vote. Right, um, he's tw 22, is he? Or he's, he's 22. So we, we black women, we bring, we bring our friends and family along and that's the value. Uh, but we have to look at it, not as election day, but as election season. Right. And but so you're we, asking you're asking for tripling, though. Talk talk to us a little bit about that. It's not just bringing oh one person along. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we probably do this naturally. I you know I looked at some studies that women of color are doing this. Uh, we did right. it, uh, uh, and we're behind a uh, thirty seven percent increase in turnout amongst women of color in our communities for the midterm elections two years ago. But there's this term. It's called vote tripling. Just to simplify it. When you vote, you bring at least three other people. Just make sure, hey, when are you going to vote? Hey, uh, we still have the registration deadlines and the request for vote by mail deadlines are still to come. So we still have time. Um, I know in California, every registered voter is going to be, you know, get, get a, a paper ballot. Right. And I'm going to make sure that three people in my world uh, drop their ballot off early. I'm not putting my ballot in the mailbox. I don't trust right, it. Right, right. And I, think, I, don't... I think most of us have decided that, you know, even though it might be the most sensible thing to do, it might not be the smartest thing to do. Um, 
you know, just to make sure, you know, we're, we're counted. So I, I'm really impressed by your Get Out the, the Vote campaign. I want to talk a little bit now about the candidates, I mean, which is also extra, extraordinary. I recommend that you go to shethepeople.org because you'll find so much information there about uh, getting you and yourself and your friends, your family uh, to a, a ballot box somewhere and somehow. But the women of color, you know, I was shocked to read there are 130 black women who are running. Talk to us about that. And we're talking about black women, but there's 75 Latina, 41 Asian American, 16 Middle Eastern, 18 uh, tribal uh, Native American women. That's a lot of candidates uh, this year. Uh, talk to us a little it's bit an, about the inspiration for all of that. I, I think uh, women of color are standing up for leadership, not just the Kamala Harris at the top of the ticket or in Congress, but the real action is happening down ballot. An historic number of women of color are running. It, it's almost like the dam was broken, that we were told for, you know, cycle after cycle, decade after decade and generations, we weren't ready. It's mm -hmm. not our time. Uh, we would have the parties running people and taking us out in primaries. And while that still was a major factor this year, it was just the sheer number of exceptional women who are running. Um, I wrote something in Shondaland uh, last week, just highlighting 20 of the amazing women, but I, I could have I, highlighted 2,000. I read it. I read it. Should we tackle a couple of them? Who, yeah. who would you like to talk about? Well, let's talk about Mar Marquita Bradshaw, who's, okay. who's remarkable Senate campaign in Tennessee. She won her primary with a fraction of money raised than, you know, the, the, the anointed, you know, uh, mainstream Democratic candidate. And a lot of women of color, uh, the party's no help. You know, they're not backing them. But here she is. Uh, she could be the third black woman in the Senate in our nation's history. Think about that. Wow. Wow. And she's doing it by creating a path that is nobody else, nobody else has, has gone that path uh, in Tennessee. Um, and we're in a and situation it's a race now. That we, it's a race yeah. we don't hear that much about. Right. You know, I know that you're right. uplifting it, which is tremendous. So everybody right. go to She the People to get the, <laughs> the latest. Right. So. so she's very exciting. I, I also think in states where, uh, you know, blue state, you know, people like, people like, oh, New York, California, blue state, listen, listen. Right. Uh, we have a leader, Holly Mitchell, who's was a, a state senator, uh, out of, you know, California state senator. She sponsored the Crown Act to make it illegal to discriminate based on our hair. We black women understand all of the stats that show the difficulty hiring, the difficulty getting respect, the difficulty getting specific kinds of uh, roles, uh, and our girls, translate. our girls yes. getting kicked out of school because of it, right? Yeah, that's right. So she sponsored the Crown Act, which was signed by the governor a couple of years ago. And just yesterday, the governor, Governor Newsom of California, signed right. legislation that she wrote. One of them right. was to commit the state, the first state in the union, to um, to uh, study the issue of reparations on the state level. California is the tenth largest national economy. And she wrote that legislation. She got people like Ash Kalra, who's an Indian American, another progressive, and you know the majority to support. The governor signed it. So now she's a racial justice champ, not just for the state of California, but nationally. Now she's running for uh, for county supervisor, in and that is very very exciting. Yeah, so, so I love I love that emphasis that you put on. Let's not just think about who's going to be president, although that's very important, but it's all the way down the ballot because that's the only way you're going to get candidates who support you if that's you support right. them. Well, think know. about all the think about all the reasons that people have been protesting, uh, demanding accountability in police forces, uh, demanding a solution. Are the schools open, closed? Demanding um, uh, cash payments for people who cannot find jobs. Uh, de de demanding an uh, you know, support for small business, all the things that affect our communities, our local issues, even federal money gets distributed through the state agencies right. or county agencies or local. And so we have to understand that women of color standing up in these numbers means that we will have uh, people who are closer to the needs of the community in the places that we need them. Um, and right. that's a so, really positive uh, development. Yeah, I, I love I, I love the survey uh, that you did, and forgive me for stepping over. It's my reporter's instinct, but it's also the delay. <laughs> but, 
but I love the survey uh, that you did uh, that, I mean, one of the demands was a black woman uh, uh, as uh, vice president, you got that. I know that the survey came back saying they wanted uh, a 25% cabinet or what was the, the cabinet that, uh, the number yeah, that they were asking that's for. Right. That, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's totally logical. A cabinet for the new administration to be 25% women of color maps to uh, the, the population that makes complete and utter sense. Look right. at the cabinet and, right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also an expansion. Also an expansion of the the Supreme Court. I look, know look, we, that, we, but you all did that before the rest of us caught up to the reason why the expa expansion had to happen. We have a new uh, nominee, uh, Amy Coney Barrett, who in all likelihood will uh, rise to the Supreme Court. Uh, talk to us a little bit about expansion there. I, I know we've heard the number 13 or some number. Was yeah. that in your survey of how yeah. big we should get to Yeah, I think people, yeah, there's, a, there's legislation right now sponsored by Ro Khanna, who's a a, congress, a congressman from California Progressive, uh, co-sponsored by Barbara Lee, my congresswoman, um, and others, basically calling for reforms, adding the number of seats and limiting the term to right. 18 years, I believe it is, so that we are, right now, Trump understands if he puts, you know, and the, and the Senate confirms yeah. his kind of illegitimate As nominee yes. la right before uh you the new inauguration he knows he's probably going to lose he knows but they're trying to solidify uh the conservative really right wing and really white supremacist because right. you have to understand all three are now connected uh yes. politically that uh he's trying to you know solidify that for generations to come and we need to talk about structural changes and there has been times in american history where the supreme court was different sizes no reason that we can't expand the size of the supreme court and put a black woman there's never been an indigenous woman on, on, on the court what about an asian american woman hey we should be thinking transformational about making sure that the the judiciary is independent which right now would not be guaranteed to be independent i mean you're talking about a lap dog of trump's you know, who right. would, you know, everyone think, okay, well, not only is dedicated to eliminating Roe v. Wade and our choice as women. And, and is ACA also, as yeah. well. There, yeah, there goes that's right. Health insurance. Okay. The, this is not a, this is a person who will do the bidding and is not an independent, doesn't represent an independent voice. We need that. So, uh, you know, in terms of just the functioning of our democracy and the fact that we need to see ourselves in uh, in, in government, in, in the judiciary, in, um, you know, administration, in executive branch, you know, sure. all of that. So uh, I think that's, so that, and uh, I, it's yeah, not and a I, crazy idea. You know, I, it started I out, know. it's like, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> no, no, no. But you guys were promoting it long before everybody said, oh, yes, this ha actually has to happen. We have to do this. But what about the electoral college, now, which is what, you know, one of my grievances, uh, Especially since uh, you know the 2016 election, and what was it, three million more votes that that, I, that Hillary Clinton got, and yet uh, we have this this president. So, yes. uh, what what's your position on that, and how easy is that to tackle? Well, listen, I'm talking to Carol. I know who you are. You've been pushing for the Equal Rights Amendment for <laughs> decades. You know how long these kind of structural changes. Right. Take. And yet, uh, we need to eliminate uh, the uh, Electoral College because it's undemocratic. Right. It was established to make sure that uh, the moneyed white guys had, you know, inordinate power over right. who got and to they, and make policy. So we need it. to move to a system where the majority of voters pick right. our leader. It's logical. Right now, uh, electoral college gives too much power to small and mostly white states, whereas uh, large states uh, like uh, California and others are rendered almost that uh, you know their their voice is is, is is does it count in some of the most important races for president? Um, so I'm saying that to say that we need to put on the agenda, and it's 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 top of the agenda for a lot of progressive legislators is doing what it's going to take to. Uh, eliminate the Electoral College. Obviously in 2020, uh, it's not happening. And right, so right, our strategy right. is 
to focus on the states that will deliver an electoral college win. And right. so uh, you, we, you know we the, need to be looking at structural. Right. But you know, thank you for bringing up the ERA. Right. You know, that's taken a hundred years. We're still we're still hoping for 2021. You know, we're we're almost there. But let's not let's hope it doesn't take that long to do something about the the electoral college. Talk to me uh, about you personally. I I mentioned at the top that you were a medic in the military. Uh, talk to us about that transition. Who you are now? How your life has changed now that you are on center stage. Every time I turn on the television, I see you and I say, yes. <laughs> Listen, I turned, I turned 50 and I look back on my life, the decisions I'd made to enlist in the military as a 17 year old, uh, becoming a peace activist out of that experience, which I don't think is a common experience. Uh, translating that into a life of both politics uh, dabbled in media uh, as well, right. but to create a platform for those who are marginalized. In my world, there's no more, there's no uh, uh, greater mission for me personally than to create a platform and to elevate the brilliance of black and brown women. Uh, we are so often sidelined and silenced, dehumanized and ignored, and to be, to be a person that can help to usher in a new political a culture and cultural era in this country is remarkable. Yeah, and, well, I've, uh, I've, I've, you know. Yeah, I've been encouraging you to run for office since the day I met you. So I want to know, are you any closer uh, to that personal decision on your own? Well, right, right now, it's not on my immediate to-do list. Number one, get women of color contact get women of color, continue to talk about us. So we saw in the debate stage, there was three white dudes. I was like, and yet we're the, we're the most important group here. Right. <laughs> so I want to make sure that we're, we continue to be a national press. I'm actually uh, advising Senate candidates, uh, congressional candidates, and some uh, state ledge candidates working with uh, some really remarkable women of color, creating a center of gravity and building up a course we can raise money and raise the visibility of our amazing leaders. Now, having said all that, yes. uh, I have not ruled out running for office in the, you know, sometime in the future. And it's one of those professions where we can do that later in life. And uh, I feel like this is, this is the work I'm doing now. And that could be a possibility in the future. Well, well, you know, I volunteered to sign up for your campaign back then, and it's, the offer still uh, is in, uh, in place. Uh, I am just so thrilled that you're doing the work that you're doing. It's essential, and your work has already made a difference uh, in this election um, cycle, and I'm uh, looking forward to celebrating with you on the other end. <laughs> so. Me too, and I appreciate you and your long-standing commitment to peace and justice and, and, to, and to the Black community. Uh, you are goals for me. You are goals for me. You know, I'm Thanks. looking at you and going, if I can be like Carol, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I'll Thanks. have lived a life worth living. You know? so. Amy Ellison, She the People, thank you so much. And to you all out there watching, thank you for being with us. I'm Carol Jenkins. The program is Black America. We'll see you the next time.